Hello, massage nerds. You know, yesterday I did a video on how to treat the knees, and then I started thinking, you know, that my own knee is hurting. I discovered through, um, you know, this quarantine that I have a six pack, a six pack of fat around my middle. So I started increasing my walks to twice a day, and then my knee started hurting, which it's never hurt before. So I decided, well, you know what? Why not do a video on how to take care of your own knees? So I'm gonna show you some techniques and also show you how to use some tools. And for the sake of you guys not wanting to see my skinny white leg, I kept, you know, uh, my pants on, but you know, you can do it at your own home, you know, with shorts on, whatever feels comfortable for you. Just make sure that you're in a chair that your leg is 90 degrees, that it's not too high up or too low off the floor. Like I'm short, so I need to have a little cushion just to make sure that I touch the floor. So with that, you know, just be careful that you're comfortable, that your back is straight so that you don't just use your arms, but I'm gonna show you how to lean into it and use, you know, your your whole, you know, most of your body weight, your upper body weight anyway to treat your quads and your hamstrings and the tibialis anterior and some of the gastrocnemias because those muscles really, if they're hypertonic and off balance, if one side is stronger than the other one, it will start, you know, pulling on your knee and causing you some, some knee pain. So as you, I mentioned in the previous video that knee, the knee, which is the patella, is the most complex joint in the body. It's a sesamoid bone that's embedded in tendons and it has a lot of ligaments. And you know, the ligaments and the tendons don't have as much blood flow, you know, as much as a muscle. So muscles heal a lot quicker, just like your skin, because they're, you know, they're vascular and the tendons and ligaments, they're mainly, you know, avascular. They, they la lack a lot of blood flow. So it's important to, treat the muscles around the knee joint and um i'll show you you know let's get started make sure that you're upright you know let's start with the quads you know and just to start you know i'm big on doing you know just some gentle strokes you know i kept my pants on because you guys don't want to see my skinny chicken legs my skinny white chicken legs so just do some strokes you know with your fingertips you know this is a form of deportment actually you know you can do some some finger tapping here or all fingers together just to get the blood circulating into your leg so that you can do some work you know and then um, another one that you can do is you know you can do some effleurage you know just all remember always go towards your heart centripetal is very important you want to do anything you do on the limbs that always towards the heart so as you can see i'm leaning forward and then all i'm doing is taking you know going back my back is straight but i'm leaning forward and just grabbing right around my knee and pulling pulling back by sitting back i'm not just doing this with my arms because at the end of 10 minutes, your back's gonna get tired. So then now another thing that I'm gonna do is, you know, put your hands like this and just spread the muscle. Spread the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis, vastus medialis and intermedius. So you're kind of just spreading the muscle, you know, just to start off with. You can also do some petrissage, you know. You, it, it's not impossible to do petrissage on your leg you know, especially around the vastus lateralis and the iliotibial band. Now the iliotibial band, you know, it's been shown that it's it's really such a um, hard tissue that it can't really be stretched. So, but if you can just separate, even just go over it, you know, just kind of spreading the vastus lateralis from the iliotibial band, you can do that. And if you want to do it too on the inside, you know, where the adductors are, you can do that, you know, circular motions or just pull up, you know. So, um, let me see, you can even do some skin rolling if you've got, you know, if you're able to do some skin rolling, you know, do some skin rolling. And um, let me show you now with this tool. I, I really like this tool. It, you can do some effleurage, do it 
slowly. Warm up the, the tissues first. And once you warm it up, then I'm gonna show you a stretch. And it doesn't hurt at all. You can actually go quite deep with this one. You know, and you start right, you know, superior to the patella. You don't wanna, you know, if especially if your knee's hurting. I'm just trying to relax these muscles. So once you're done, you know, doing that, I'm gonna show you, you know, like even with your knuckles, you're gonna, you know, your, your back is straight. You're gonna lean a little bit forward. You're gonna put your knuckles, you know, on the top by the rectus femoris. And now you're gonna extend your leg and then bring it back. Oh, mine popped. <laughs> and then you start pulling back at the same time that you're extending and bending. So you extend, so you're engaging the the quads and then the hamstrings you are being engaged when you're pulling back so all i'm doing is sitting back a little bit and bringing my hands up you know and it flex and extend flex and extend and you can do it again moving your hands you know maybe a couple of inches laterally to engage the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. So start with your foot down, you know, and then just start pulling back and extend and bend. Extend and bend, extend and bend, extend and bend. So you really warmed up your quads and the hamstrings. So now let's go to the hamstrings. One of the things that you wanna do is you know, make like you're gonna up and just interlace your fingers and pull down on the hamstrings. And you might need to sit, you know, at the end of the chair, but cup your fingers like this underneath and just pull down. You know, all I'm doing is pulling down, separating the hamstrings here. Make sure your leg, you know, that your that your back is straight so that you don't end up hurting yourself. And just pulling on those hamstrings as high as you can you know and then now we're going to go the opposite way you're going to spread them up so you're going to take your fingertips and just spread up you know spread up lean back so that you don't end up hurting you know your your back and your arms that they don't get too tired so all i'm doing is going alongside the hamstrings and just spreading them out okay and like I said, you know, you want to end with some nerve ending strokes. I always like the nerve ending stroke. They feel so good. It's like, okay, you're done. And if you find something that's really tight on you, you know, you might want to use some of the tools and stay there a little bit longer. Now, the tibialis anterior is also very important, you know, very important because, um, the knee, the patellar, the patellar tendon that cross, it's actually the extension of the quads, you know, inserts right here at the tibial tuberosity. So that's, you know, one of the things that really can, you know, cause pain on people, especially if their quads are really tight. So you want to go ahead and, you know, massage the patellar, you know, ligament. You can do circular motions. Oh, I forgot to go back to the tibialis anterior. I'll do that right now. So around the knee, you want to make sure and just, you know, circles around the knee, you know, do a little bit of friction, you know, oh, whoops, make sure your back is straight. I just caught myself. Make sure your back is straight. Do a little bit of circles, you know, this is very important. Do a cross fiber at the patellar, you know, at the quads tendon that is crosses the patella and inserts right below it at the tibial tuberosity. So you want to make sure that that tendon is nice and loose, you know, and then you come down here, you know, and just stay there, you know, 15 to 20 seconds, depending on whether, if you have pain, of course, you're going to stay there a little bit longer. Now I'm going to show you something where, you know, make sure your knees relaxed, make sure that it's not tense, that your foot is nice and flat on the floor. And you're going to hold your knee on the opposite side, you know, your, your, the uh, medial side, and then you can go on the lateral side, you know, uh, the accruciate lateral ligament, you know, is right around here. So you, you can go ahead and just use your fingertips either like piggyback, that really gets in there, 
or all of your, you know, the tips of your fingers, you can really get underneath there. And a lot of times right here, where the insertion of the vastus lateralis goes right here and joins the iliotibial bend, I find that on a lot of the clients, this is very painful. So you can hang out there for a minute. You know, if it's a trigger point, it's okay to stay there, you know, 15 to 20 seconds doing circular motions or just holding it. You know, we tell our clients to breathe. So you take a deep breath, you exhale, you know, you can hold it there a couple of times and, you know, like it's easing up on me, but this was really, really tight when I started and I felt it. So I wanted to hang out here for a few minutes and, you know, uh, do a little bit more friction and petrosage. Another one that I forgot to talk about in the video yesterday was um, when I was doing the knee, the knee video, I forgot to talk about the pest and serinus. You know, this is on the medial side. It is the attachment of three muscles, the uh, the semi-tendinosis, the gracilis, and the sartorius. And they insert right here, like, uh, you know, right above the knee, like a couple of inches, and you'll be able to feel it. I forgot to talk about that because if you have the, um, the pes and serinus, you know, um, inflammation it's very very sore and a lot of times on people you know from the in, that insertion they refer pain into the knee and they might think you know that it's that the tendons or the ligaments and a lot of times it's just the insertion of these muscles that are tight and pulling so make sure you work this medial part right here now obviously you're going you want to treat the medial part so you're going to Put your hand to protect, you know, just to support the kneecap. And then you can move it just a little bit so that, again, you go like right underneath the patella and you can do the piggyback with both fingers or the tips of all your fingers, you know, depending. Okay, so once you've treated that, you know, if you, your patella has to be nice and relaxed and you can move it, you know, superior and then push down inferior gently. Don't, don't dislocate anything, but, you know, you can just move it down and up, you know, medial, lateral, but make sure your leg is nice and relaxed, that you're not forcing anything, you know, anything like that. Now, for the gastrocnemius and the soleus, you know, they're on the posterior part of the leg. And those, you know, like the gastrocnemius, you know, originates right in the condyles on the uh, and, uh, posterior side. So you want to take your fingers. Now, do not go in the popliteal, which is the soft tissue right behind your knee. You have blood vessels and nerves that go through there that you don't want to put pressure on. I'm on the lateral sides you know, of the knee, like, you know, I'm going to show you, I'm going to lift my leg. I'm on the lateral sides, just massaging, you know, circular motions, spreading a little bit, you know, right behind the knee. If you have a Baker cyst, I, I have had two clients with Baker cyst and you can really feel that bump right behind there, you know, where the bursa is uh, really swollen and the, uh, the muscle you know, is, is really damaged there. So anyway, you want to make sure and work the gastrocnemius, you know, you can lean forward and just come up, you know, just come up and work your gastrocnemius, you know, all the way up. You can even do it all the way up if you want, but I'm leaning back. I'm not using just my arms. I am leaning forward, grabbing by my ankle. I don't think you guys can see, but I'm grabbing by my ankle on the posterior part and then just going up. And then for the soleus, I'm going to put my thumbs up. Oh, you can put your fingers. If, if you don't want to use your thumbs, I, I know that I have a tendency to use my thumbs a lot, which I shouldn't, you know, so you can just put your fingers by the soleus and just come up too. So you just, you grab behind your ankles and then you sit back, you know, and that's a good way to massage your gastrocnemius. And now I'm going to put my thumbs out and just kind of press on the on the medial lateral side where the soleus is and massage that one out too. And of course, don't forget the tibialis anterior, which I forgot to show you, but you know, you can use your knuckles, you know, 
you can work it you know especially right here if you have shin splits and of course if you're at home you can put your leg up too to do some of these movements you know like to get to the tibialis anterior if you have shin splints you really want to go down you know the tibia right here and the lateral and the fibularis longus and well, we won't get into all of that you can do you know just compressing you know um, you can do like i said the, the 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 friction you can do friction you always want to go towards the heart all the time you don't want to put pressure going down the leg because the veins have little valves that prevent the blood flow from pulling on your feet so you don't want to damage those veins if you've seen varicose veins varicose veins are nothing more than the little valves that have been damaged you know so that they don't close anymore so the the blood pools there you know and stays there so do not put pressure going down the leg always towards the heart centripetal and i want to show you with some of the tools i showed you this one and this one you know like this one's really good like where the um tibia i mean the vastus laterals and the the it band you know join because they really it's a very strong band and thick too so you can do this like around the knee you know this one feels i really like this one this one feels really good and then this one the bevel bar you have to be real careful you know not to overdo it but this can really get intricately you know right there in the little crevices you know on the patella and you can really work some you know with a little bit more detail with with it with the l the bevel bar but oh see that's where i hurt right there every you know like i said i increased my walk to try to lose some weight because i gained a six pack guys <laughs> i wish it was a, a real six pack of, instead of a six pack of fat but anyway you know this one can really and of course you always want to support the knee when you're going around you know make sure that your foot is nice and relaxed your leg is nice and relaxed and at the end you know uh, oh my my jade you know, you can also do some wash off. You know, a, a Chinese doctor showed me many years ago. He was a, an acupuncturist. He showed me how to use the wash on. He even told me that what, you could even use a credit card. You know, that's why I use sometimes the, the Chinese spoons because really, you know, just anything that will get the circulation going. And, you know, if it turns red, you're increasing the blood flow so i use this jade one but there's different ones that you can use you know and if all you have is a credit card you know you can do that too but you know i just wanted to show you guys some techniques to take care of your knees and take care of yourself and don't forget at the end you know to do a little bit of friction and give your knees some love guys you know there's um you know there's so many ligaments here and they don't heal as fast and we abuse our knees sometimes by being overweight or by over running or you know people that exercise you know so make sure that you give it some some good love too and anyway that's my video for how to take care of your knees and until the next time create a great day Leave me comments. Let me know what you think about that. I, I was thinking the other day that maybe I should start doing some self-care videos. I did one uh, not too long ago about self-care movements. And now I started thinking, well, maybe I should start doing like one body part at a time. So let me know if that's something you guys want to see, okay? Till the next time, create a great day.